Maybe it's because of my legal training or my experience as a prosecutor, judge, and DA. But to me, the United States Constitution is like a rock, the very foundation upon which our country is built. But America is changing. It's changing before our very eyes. Our founding fathers wouldn't even recognize the America of today. Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. It just keeps getting worse. When they started chipping away at the Second Amendment right to keep and bear arms, mostly gun owners like me cared. And when they started chipping away at the First Amendment freedoms of the press, mostly reporters cared. Now that they're chipping away at the Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable search and seizure of houses, papers, and effects, everybody needs to care. This week began with an ugly glimpse into the mismanagement and corruption in the IRS, the very agency that requires we all be clean as a whistle. And the week ended with dual revelations that our government is surveilling virtually every one of us, or at least those of us who use a phone. And then in a one-two punch that the FBI and NSA are now traipsing through the Internet without telling us, capturing audio, video, photos, emails, and user content. But first, to the IRS. Now, they're not only targeting conservatives and silencing political dissent, we now know that they've spent more than $50 million in two years on parties and get-togethers for themselves. Our hard-earned taxpayer dollars are spent so that a bunch of IRS buffoons can dance, play act, get drunk, and party like it's 1999. But not to worry. We've been told that those days are over now that they've been caught and there are new guidelines that have been created. I have an idea. Why do we even have conferences for these government employees? Put out a manual, make them read it, have a conference call, Skype, use GoToMeeting, send an email. Since when are they entitled to spend our money on two-bedroom presidential suites, gifts for themselves, free food, and pay speakers thousands of dollars to color in front of them. And five nights in the presidential suite and upgrades for the rest of those IRSers? Hell, when I worked for the government, I had to buy my own coffee. And if I were the keynote, the most I got was the room without the bugs or the room with the clean sheets. Their arrogance is astounding. The mind-blowing chutzpah. But it gets better, folks. These bozos say they're not even sure how much the conference cost. Why? Because they didn't keep the receipts. And they're sorry. Really? When was the last time the IRS told the target of an audit deducting a business expense for which there was no receipt, no record, no problem, bro, we'll overlook it. And don't tell me you can't fire these people. Is it just too much trouble? Or do they know too much? Can they point higher than themselves? Truth is, the rest of us would be fired. They're running our government like a candy store, while the rest of us struggle to pay the mortgage, pay the bills, and even think about a vacation. But when the president has to cut the budget, in his sequester, because he's spending too much money, where does he cut? He cuts education and mental health and small business and those air traffic controllers and food safety. His cuts to the IRS involve customer service and tax compliance, and the public wouldn't be able to get answers to their calls. They're not even answering the phone at the IRS. They're getting drunk in Anaheim at that $50 million conference. But instead, the Obama administration is rewarding them, like Sarah Hall Ingram. She's the one who directed the unit that targeted the Obama political enemies. She's now in charge of the implementation of Obamacare in the IRS. And like Susan Rice, she has her Obama bona fides. Really? 
You put this woman in charge of implementation of Obamacare at the IRS. She decides through her well-earned prism of politics whether I get that mammogram or whether someone with a limb blown off because of the incompetence of another arm of government gets a prosthesis. And how about the other two bozos at the IRS Star Trek conference who took gifts and food without declaring them? They're allowed to amend their W-2s because they got caught. Right. The rest of us would be indicted for tax evasion. Now they get to work in health care enforcement in the IRS. Are you starting to worry yet? But don't be worried. We are protected from those terrorists. And the information that we just learned about, the collection of phone data and internet data, is just routine. Routine? Where? In 1984? And folks, we need to trust our government. The internet stuff they're collecting is from foreign and not domestic users. Rest easy, folks. The incoming National Security Advisor will have a key role over this. You remember her, Susan Rice the one who gave us the Benghazi fairy tale. And soon, as NSA chief, with no congressional oversight of her talking points, she can say whatever her boss wants her to say. Now, I personally don't have a problem with the Patriot Act. I get that law enforcement and war on terror angle. But run that one by me again. You need to know every phone call that I make to what number for how long and where I am to catch a terrorist? Aren't you required to demonstrate some indicia of probable cause? All my cell phone calls you get to catch a terrorist? Hey, maybe next time anyone has any questions about your phone bills, what calls were made, where, when, and from where, and how long they lasted, don't call Verizon. Call your friendly G-man. After all, these government men, they're here to help. And who collects this data? The FBI? The same guys who saw no level of suspicion in the Boston bomber after a foreign government went out of its way to tell us about him, not once, but twice? The same FBI that after interviewing the Boston bomber said he wasn't suspicious? that let him go back to the country from which he fled po political persecution, the same FBI who allowed him to come back through customs, and then after the bombing didn't recognize him and had to put the brother's picture in the newspaper to ask for our help? What, did he have a mask on when you first interviewed him? Now, we're going to rely on the FBI that wouldn't even tell New Yorkers that these brothers planned not only to party here, but planned to detonate yet another bomb in, pa in Times Square. And by the way, your surveillance hasn't been too effective so far. It was a civilian who saw the blood on the tarp that led to the arrest of the Boston bomber. It was the fellow passengers on the plane headed to Detroit that stopped Abdu Matala. Shazad was identified by an alert street vendor. And by the way, Mr. President, isn't the war on terror over? You said that just the week before last. And you also said, don't blame me, Bush did it. But Mr. Obama, didn't you object to Bush's doing it when in truth you've expanded it? And if it's all legal and Bush did it, why is your national director, uh, your director of national intelligence, clueless clapper there, saying that we're not supposed to know about it when your defense is that we already knew about it. He said the unauthorized disclosure of this important information is reprehensible and risks important protections for the security of Americans. Okay, should I now assume that the reporters who broke the story will have their heads on the Obama chopping block for, for releasing that information that we already knew about? And since our enlightened Attorney General Eric Holder now says the Justice Department's goal is to prosecute government officials and not the press, does that mean you're going to prosecute Leon Panetta for leaking the name of the unit commander of SEAL Team 6 instead of those who told us about our phones and emails? You remember Leon Panetta, the guy who thinks it's 1923 and an F-16 is really a twin-engine prop and can't get to Libya in time to save American lives? But back to the surveillance. 
I may be picky, but that pesky United States Constitution requires some indicia of wrongdoing before you can surveil Americans. And you say, don't worry, be happy, and we'll catch them? I have an idea. How about we increase the size of the federal government, add another agency to oversee the possible abuse of this surveillance? And if it's essential that you have this information to protect the nation against terrorism and whether suspected terrorism, terrorists have been in contact with persons inside the U.S., how is it that you miss the Boston bomber and his repeated contact with jihadi mom and dad? I welcome this debate. Uh, and uh, I, I think it's healthy for our, our democracy. I think it's a sign of maturity because probably five years ago, six years ago, we might not have been having this debate. Okay, it's about maturity. It's not about the fact that you said that our privacy need not be invaded in order to protect us from terrorism. Mr. President, does the narrative change depending on what Americans find out? Has our government become so political that there are no issues, only sides? You're going to protect us from terrorism. When you find out about terrorism, like Benghazi, you don't do anything anyway. The guy you think is responsible for Benghazi is still walking around in flip-flops, flipping us the bird, drinking his strawberry cocktails, and daring us to come after him. And most of the time, Mr. President, you won't, even, you won't even call it what it is. Muslim terrorists. Remember that guy working at Fort Hood, the Army psychiatrist? He killed 13 and wounded 32 of us? He's really not a terrorist. He was just engaged in workplace violence. I've come to believe that Americans' trust of their government is at an all-time low. The thinking is that everybody just lies. That is not something that um, I've ever been involved in. Not wittingly. I have not done anything wrong. So when the game of who's lying and who to believe, I'm starting to believe that the Constitution, that rock, has been so damaged that America truly is unrecognizable. The vision of our founding fathers have been, has been obliterated. The shame is on all of us.